If the lion is the king of the jungle, how can he be the king of the jungle? If he's not the biggest, he can't be the fastest because that's a cheat. He can't be the smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So how does a lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. When a lion walks up and sees an elephant, he thinks lunch. And it's all mentality. He may be outnumbered by a pack of hyenas, but I'm king of my jungle because of my mentality. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, no boss can do it. You versus you. Life will not always be 70 and sunny. Life is the ultimate competitor. It's relentless. It will continue to attack when you least expect it. We must learn to adapt and overcome to any and all obstacles that are in front of us. We have to evolve. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it. And if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famish or gulf, sickness or pain or body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim you besiege and beset it, with the help of God you'll get it. I want you to know something, that the bigger your dream is, I want you to understand the harder to grind. There, listen to me. Luck is for leprechauns, and you ain't green. I don't, I'm, not bringing you, I'm not bringing you a fairy tale. What I am telling you is that if you're willing to go beast mode, you can have whatever you want. I'm a living example. You can start from nothing. He said, I want what all other men want. He said, I guarantee you, when I line up and they line up, I want what all other men want. I guarantee you, when you line up in your one-on-one -on -one battles, you want what all other men want. The same way you want the victory, they want the victory. I want what all other men want. He said, but when the pressure hits, when the opposition hits, when the challenge hits, when the pain creeps in, when the uncertainty creeps in, when the cuts, when the scars, when the bruises come, I want what all other men want. He said, but when the opposition and adversity shows up, I just want a little bit more than they wanted. And so that's how I conquer, and that's how nobody has ever beaten me yet. I just want one thing from you. As great as you are, as skilled as you are, as talented as you are, I just want one thing from you. Never allow life to make you forget why you do what you do. Lazy people do a little work and think they should be winning, but winners work as hard as possible and still worry if they're being lazy. You might not be a lion yet. Some of you in this room, you might be an ant. You might have small beginnings. You might not have a lot of money. You might not have a lot of resources. But he's determined, he's strong, he has a dream and a goal, and he'll do whatever it takes. And I need you to understand that the bigger your dream is, the earlier you're going to have to get up. The longer you're going to have to stay up. The bigger your dream is, the more effort you're going to have to put in. You'll never see it for those of you who are 70%, 70% beast mode, 30% gazelle. That's just enough for that other person, I'll do you. When the obstacle gets in front of you, don't let it stop you. Don't let it deter you. Now you get around that motherfucker.
Me versus me. It means that I'm going to try to be the best that I can be, the strongest, the fastest, the smartest human being that I can become. That is what I'm going to go for. And it doesn't matter that I will not be better than others when I compare myself to them. No. I will look at others who do achieve greatness in a category and I will say, look at what is possible. How close can I get to that greatness? How close can I get to that glory? But my glory doesn't happen in front of a crowd. It doesn't happen in a stadium or on a stage. There are no medals handed out. It happens in the darkness of the early morning, in solitude. Only thing noble about victimhood is overcoming it. You can understand that the only thing noble about your life is going to be what you show people is actually possible, okay? We're all put here for a reason. And it's not to go over here and beat on this drum about what should be and what's not fair. The world will never be fair. The world will never, ever be fucking fair. Someone will always have an easier path than you. Someone will always have a more difficult path than you. Regardless of how difficult you think your path is, there's lots of people out there who have had that same path and actually won huge with that path. If we respect it the way we say we respect it, if we love it the way we say we love it, if we cherish it the way we say we cherish it, every single day should be nothing less than excellence. You might not always be your best, but you can always bring me your best. Then claim one victory that no one can ever take away from me, ever. And the victory that is earned every single day because I will not stop. You ready? You're hopelessly average. You are not special. You're just like everyone else. And yay! Because that means all you have to believe about yourself is that you can change that it is in your fundamental nature to grow and get better, that we all inside of us have this deep desire to get better. So I have a dream. Okay, fantastic. I have one question. What skills does your dream require you to obtain? If you want to be great, if you want to play on a world stage, you're going to pay an extraordinary price to become the person that you want to become. After you lose, or when you get knocked out, stay down there for a minute. Understand why you lost. What were the reasons? Why are you down here? Why did you lose? So every time I lost, I stayed down for a second. Minutes, hours, days. But when I stood up, I was different. Now you start putting the pieces that are necessary to win over and over and over again. We all have dreams. I had it when I was younger. So I figured the best place to make those dreams come true are in isolation. So I walked into isolation as David Goggins. But I walked out of isolation as Goggins. When you become a savage, is in isolation. You go in isolation, and that's when your mind changes. That's when your focus changes. Your dedication changes. This is to grant strength, gain focus. Isolation is the key to strengthen your mind. Come on, savage. What do you do when a thousand other people want exactly what you want? What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want? You have to outwork them. You gotta outvine them. You gotta get up earlier. You gotta stay up later. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. What's the plan? 
And when you're trying to do something that you're truly passionate about, there is no plan B. Think about that for a second. Michael Jordan won six NBA championships with the Chicago Bulls because he was committed to plan A, not plan B. Plan B sucks. Sometimes we get stuck in these situations where we start looking to other people for our self-esteem. And sometimes we find ourselves looking in broken mirrors to get a reflection of ourselves. You are where you are because of the choices you've made and the skill set you've built. Period. End of story. Now, why is that the best news ever? Because it means you're in control. You've steered yourself to exactly this point. But now that you take that control back and you recognize that you can go anywhere you want, become anyone you want to become, but you're going to have to put in the work, now you can decide whether you want to put in that work or not. Until I get through it, I'm going to be a better servant because of it. There's this quote that says, you go through the storm and you're not supposed to be the same person on the other side of the storm because that's the purpose of the storm. Like when I go through it, I'm like, man, I'm going to be a better servant, better leader, better team member as a result of it. I'm not going to resist the, the opposition. I'm not going to resist the adversity. I'm not going to resist the challenge. My favorite quote is the quote by Dr. King that says, you judge the character and caliber of a person not by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the character and caliber of a person by what they stand in times of challenge and opposition. Everybody can smile when the sun out. Everybody can be happy when they're making money. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, the amount of mental pain, of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. That's your new norm. I stopped saying I've gotta wait for good things to happen to me, and I said I'm gonna ride. I'm going to fight, I'm going to work, I'm going to press toward, I'm going to learn, I'm going to do everything in my power, every single day, I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. Now let me say this before I move forward, and I can't explain it, but you better feel me. Winners win, and losers lose. I can't explain it any better than that. I don't know how it happens, but winners win. And if you create a culture of losing, if you keep being a victim, if you keep letting losing happen to you, if you keep letting people do you and treat you any kind of way, it's going to become a culture. The way to win this game called life is not money, it's not fame, it's not other people's adoration. It is quite simply what you think about yourself when you're by yourself. It's fulfillment. Fulfillment is working really hard to gain a set of skills that are of value to you, that allow you to serve not only yourself but others. If you do that, if you work really hard to become something, to have a power, building things, whatever the power is that you want, and then you put it to use in service of yourself and others. You put it to use in service of something bigger than you. Then you'll have fulfillment. Then you'll have something that the ancient Greeks called techni. It's something that no one can take away from you. It's something born of a cold shower, of working out in the gym, of not eating the thing that you want of getting out of bed immediately when it's time, getting up, studying and practicing long after it stopped being fun. That's fulfillment. Nobody is going to give you anything that you have not earned. Nobody cares how tough your upbringing was. Nobody cares if you suffered some discrimination, you have to remember that whatever you've gone through, it pales in comparison to the hardships previous generations endured, and they overcame them, and if they overcame them, you can overcome them too. 
Dreams without goals are just dreams, and they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. Hard work works. Weakness. Do I have weakness? I am nothing but weakness. I'm not naturally strong or fast or flexible. I'm certainly not the smartest person in the world. Now, all that being said, I have a saying. A person's strength is often their biggest weakness, but their weaknesses can become strengths. Me, I am weak. In all those ways, I am weak. And everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer. Never give up then, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. Never give up then, and that is so important. When you're working on doing the things you want to do and fulfilling your dream, and things happen, there are times when your energy feels so depleted that you want to give up that it looks just totally impossible. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up then. That's when you've got to fall forward, when life is kicking dirt in your face. Don't give up then. That's when most people turn back. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what gives your life meaning. That you're going to start working on that dream. You're going to work and nurture that idea. You need an antidote to suffering, and it has to be deep. And you know, deep moves you tectonically, and it's not a trivial thing. And but that's better than happiness. And maybe if you're lucky, while you're pursuing that, and while you're immersed in it, you get to be happy, and and you should fall on your knees and be grateful for that when it happens. You know, it's a gift. It really is a gift, and it comes upon you unexpectedly. Your happiness, you know, but. You aim to climb uphill to the highest peak you can possibly envision, and that's that's better than happiness. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. The most important conversation is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it. Eventually, you act on it. When your mind knows it's not going to quit, and this is what I found out, this is my 40% rule. When your mind knows it's not going to quit, your body will adapt to whatever is in front of it. I don't accept that I am what I am, and that that is what I am doomed to be. No, I do not accept that. I'm fighting. I'm struggling and I'm scraping and kicking and clawing at those weaknesses to change them. That we, as human beings, are capable of anything, and we don't need any special kind of parents or tools to get there. So I end you with this. Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you're done. You must have faith. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in your abilities. You've got to believe in your service, your company, 
your ideas unquestionably. You got to have faith, and that faith gives you patience. That is not going to happen as quickly as you want it to happen. A lot of things are going to happen that will catch you off guard. And so therefore you've got to deal with and handle it as it comes. And not only that, but that faith and patience drives you into action. It's about the daily labor, the many individual acts, the choices large and small that add up over time, over a lifetime to a lasting legacy. That's what you want on your tombstone. It's about not being satisfied with the latest achievement, the latest gold star, because the one thing I know about a body of work is that it's never finished. It's cumulative. It deepens and expands with each day that you give your best, each day that you give back and contribute to the life of your community, you may have setbacks and you may have failures, but you're not done. You're not even getting started. Not by a long shot. To find the greatness that lies within each of us. So don't ever shy away from that endeavor. Don't stop adding to your body of work. I can promise that you will be the better for that continued effort. Why do you do this thing every single day and what does it mean to you? I want you to ask yourself those two questions every single day. When you get tired, when you're not feeling it, when you don't value it, when you take it for granted, every single day, why do I do this and what does it mean to you? Because if you say you do it for a certain reason and it means something to you, every single day you'll come out and you'll never cheat it and you'll cherish every single aspect of it for the ability to become great. The shortcut is a lie. The hack doesn't get you there. And if you want to take the easy road, it won't take you to where you want to be. Stronger, smarter, faster, healthier, better. To reach goals and overcome obstacles and be the best version of you possible will not happen by itself. It will not happen cutting corners, taking shortcuts, or looking for the easy way. There is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. It's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. I know what it's like to operate every single day, regardless of the success that I've been a lucky son of a bitch to achieve. I operate every day as if I'm starving. I can't get a break in life. I hate that damn mentality, but I can't get a break. You aren't given any breaks in life. You make them for yourself. We are all being tested in life. While my test is different than yours, you will be tested. And how you face that test, and how you overcome that test, determines the rest of your life. The one mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics, I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't want to do half the shit I do. But still I cry. Most people, they'll put out goals, dreams, and aspirations and what they want to accomplish. But you very rarely hear people say what they're willing to sacrifice in order to make it happen. They'll tell you the goal, the dream, the aspiration. They'll tell you they want to be elite. They'll tell you they want to be great. But they're not going to say, I'm going to stop going out on Friday night. 
They're not going to say I'm going to sacrifice and I'm going to stay late. They'll tell you the goals, the dreams, and the aspirations, but cats will very rarely touch on what they got to sacrifice in order to make it happen because wherever they're sacrificed, it's interconnected to accountability. And what I'm suggesting to you is pain can be transformed into power with the intention to transform pain into power. You see, what most people do is this is why most good people lose. They stumble and they fall and they become heartbroken or disappointed by life's challenges that happens to every single one of us. because I didn't do X, Y, and Z, and guess what? That it hurts a little bit. That bothers us a little bit. It's a hard truth to accept, but once you accept that truth, you are able to then move forward with the actions required to get you to where you wanna go. Your life is the exact reflection of the choices you have made. Love your life? Great, you've made awesome choices. Hate your life? I'm sorry. You've made bad choices. But the good news is, you're in control. I'm talking to you guys right now who still have hope, who still have the fire, who still have the want and the will and the desire to be more and become more and contribute more and win more because you know your life will be better and everybody else's life around you will be better. I'm talking to you, motherfuckers. You can do this. In other words, when the outcome changes and it's not what we want it to be and it doesn't turn out the way we want it to turn out, do we still value the thing that we once said we value? Is our character still intact? Right? Because we all know it. Character is not something we inherit. Character is something we got to wake up every single day. We got to fight and we got to build it in the midst of opposition. In the midst of challenges, in the midst of uncertainty, we got to wake up and we got to build. I used to tell guys all the time, I don't care how tall your father is, you got to do your own growing. In other words, every single day we got to build our own character. When they look in the mirror, they're just trying to see what's on the surface. But winning and losing wants to know what's inside of you. It wants to know what makes you tick. It wants to know what your desires are. It wants to know what your ego is. It wants to know what your limitations are. It wants to know what your mindset is. It wants to know everything about you because winning does not lie. When you look in the mirror, you can lie and see what's on the surface. You cannot lie what's going on inside. Discipline defeats the infinite excuses that say, not today, not now, I need a rest, I'll do it tomorrow. What's the hack? How do you become stronger, smarter, faster, healthier? How do you become better? How do you achieve true freedom? There is only one way. The way of discipline. You either are or you fucking are. You either will or you fucking won't. You're either going to become or you're not going to become. Everything in our life is controlled by three decisions. I think one of the most powerful things we deserve is have you become clear of what the controlling force is that's controlling the quality of your life. And you and I both know it's not the amount of money in your pocket, it's not who you know, it's not even what you've been through. It's really the decisions you make moment to moment. The first one is what are you going to focus on? What makes it hard 
is your lack of belief that it can happen for you. The fact of it is, though, it's very doable. See, if but you got to change, though. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So if you're at a place in your life and you ain't happy with it, you have to change some things. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. If you want to get better, you have to find out what you're avoiding and what you're afraid of. And maybe what you're disgusted by even. And you have to expose yourself to that voluntarily, and you have to let that change you. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. All right, man, I'm, I'm done. But what's hard is going, yo, yesterday I got nothing from working as hard as I could. I'm going to do the same thing again today, but I'm going to try to go harder. Here's the reality, and you're, you're going to feel the truth of this instantly. Most dreams never come true. Most of the people that you know, most of the dreams that you've had for yourself, they haven't come true. Why not? Because they're brutally difficult. The fall. It is, goes back, as a matter of fact, to extremely fundamental things. That there is always a curious tie at some point between the fall and the creation. Taking this ghastly risk is the condition of there being life. You see, for all, the life is an, an act of faith and an act of gamble. Returning is the motion of the Tao. Returning is the motion of the Tao. So that all of us came from a divine spiritual essence, invisible. Everything in the world of form emanated from something that is formless. There was a split second when you went from non-being to being. To be able to return to that place from which you came and live your life from the spiritual perspective and become a God-realized being. Another great poet, T.S. Eliot, once said, we shall not cease from exploration. And at the end of all of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and to know the place for the first time. That from the moment you come awake till the moment you fall asleep, how many moments and how many actions and how many thoughts and how many emotions or how much percentage of it do you conduct consciously? This will determine the state of your evolution right now. Your ambitions blind you to the nature of reality. Now they illuminate some reality. But one of the things that you might ask yourself once you know that is that if you're suffering dreadfully, then one possibility is that you're so fixed on a point, the fact that you're so fixed on the point that you're fixed on might be integrally related to why things are going so catastrophically wrong. You do what you did in the beginning and there won't be an end. Because when you think it's the beginning, you behave differently than the end. The meaning we associate to things controls our entire lives. When we take control of the meaning, it's the only thing we can control our lives. We can't control events. But the only way that that dream is going to come true, even over that long period of time, is if you're going all out every day. Fear fuels you. Fear lets you know, go get more information. Fear lets you know, step a little later and study. Fear lets you know, get up a little earlier. Fear lets you know, ask for help. Fear is informing you, it's not stopping you. It's just another emotion like love and compassion and gratitude. We just made it paralyze us. Not everything you want, everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. The fact that you can walk, that's a blessing. The fact that you woke up, 
that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. Ability to dream is a blessing. The, the, the fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The moment you take a step, you do so on an act of faith because you don't really know that the floor is not going to give under your feet. The moment you take a journey, what an act of faith. The moment you enter into any kind of human undertaking in relationship, what an act of faith. But this is the most powerful thing that can be done. Surrender. But what does matter is your entire life is being lived by your brain. You're more likely to believe something negative than you are something positive. Now think about how that can echo through your life. Each of us has to realize that all of the beliefs that we have in our life are choices. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Expecting somebody else to change or something outside of you to get better in order for you to make your life work, it's in here. See, fear doesn't stop me. Fear informs me. And when you get intimately connected with the fear, I feel it. And I'm moving forward anyway. I feel it. And I'm going to love anyway. I feel it. And I'm going to invest in me anyway. I feel it. And I'm going to show up and play anyway. When you get connected with fear, it becomes your best friend. And when you stand on the edge, you feel the breeze. If you've been sitting around waiting for somebody to discover you, to pick you, to save you, to rescue you, to give you your shot, it's not going to happen. Like, at some point, you got to wake up and realize you have to parent yourself. Your life is your responsibility. Close your eyes. Retreat from your life. Disconnect from your body. Disconnect from your environment. Disconnect from your schedule and just give yourself an hour or 45 minutes or 20 minutes because when you invest in yourself, you invest in your future. And when you believe in yourself, you believe in possibilities. And when you believe in possibilities, you believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in possibilities, then you don't believe in yourself. And you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in possibilities. So then, but if you have a community, a living organism, where it's becoming the new normal, and you want to join that living organism and you want to every every stride you make feeds the living organism every stride every effort you make to connect is is amazing because that which we are seeking is seeking us so the real question is what is it that you can fall in love with enough that makes all the fighting through the negative voice and all of that worth it. So that's number one, is just to recognize that you've got a long timeline ahead of you. So when you stop outsourcing your happiness, your validation, your support, all of it, and you bring it back in, 
and you get responsible for it, it sounds scary, it's so liberating because you could do anything. When you're responsible, when you're the driver of your life, when you're not looking out to anybody else to fix it for you, can you ask for help? Of course, but the buck stops with you. You're the one that has to do the work. You're the one who has to push your own ass. You're the one who has to figure out what makes you happy. You're the one who has to figure out and become self-aware about what you need. And then you're the one that has to find whatever it is, the courage or being humble enough to ask for help. That's the eternal problem of life. And the problem is, there is the category of problems in life and it ain't going anywhere. And so the question is, can you deal with the whole category at the same time? That's the thing, that's how to be in the world, is to deal with that category all at the same time. Sacrifice, what does that mean, sacrifice? Well, it's a discovery, man, it's the discovery of the future. It's like, the future is actually the place where there is threat, and it's always gonna be there, so what do you do? You make sacrifices in the present so that the future is better. Right. Forestall gratification now. And it'll pay off at a, at a place and time that doesn't even exist yet. It's like, who would have believed that? It's like, that's a miracle that that occurs. And it's not like people just figure that out overnight. Most people aren't obsessed with their goals because they don't believe they're worthy of them. It's easy to dream about what you want. But in between where you are and what you want, there's a tremendous amount of stuff you gotta change and do. And if you have a lot of trauma in your background, you have been given the message over and over and over, even though it's not true, that you don't deserve it, that there's something wrong with you. And if you don't, at some point, be defiant, against what the world or your caregivers or your past experience has pounded into your brain incorrectly, unfairly, you will forever be stuck with that story. Pain plus reflection equals progress. And I think that that's incredibly, incredibly true. And the human animal just needs that bit of pain. It is the compass that's going to allow you, if you reflect on why you're feeling that pain, what you did wrong, how you failed, you don't deflect, you don't make it somebody else's problem. You really just look at how did I this up? If you look at that and are willing to make the changes, you really will make progress. I don't see a way to really have grand scale change without the suffering. That's the truth. The idea is that nothing brings a better world into being than the stated truth. Now you might have to pay a price for that, but that's fine. You're going to pay a price for every bloody thing you do and everything you don't do. You don't get to choose to not pay a price. You get to choose which poison you're going to take. That's it. So if you're going to stand up for something, stand up for your truth. It'll, it'll shape you because people will respond and object and tell you why you're a fool and a biased moron and why you're ignorant. And then if you listen to them, you'll be just that le much less like that the next time you say something. And if you do that for five years, you'll be so damn tough and articulate and able to communicate and withstand pressure that you won't even recognize yourself. And then you'll be a force to contend with. You are not responsible for what happened to you. You survived what happened to you, but you do have a responsibility to heal yourself and to do the work to change so that you can be the happy, fulfilled person that you were born to be. You can have a mindset that says, through my efforts, my attitude, I can have an impact on the situation that I'm in. That's the power that I have. That's where it begins, it begins with you. Self-confidence, self-love, self-esteem, self-reliance, self-awareness, it all has the same self. You have to give yourself those things. You want validation, give it to yourself. You wanna be cheered for, give it to yourself. You wanna feel supported in life, start by giving those things to yourself because the most important relationship that you have 
is the one you have with yourself and you work on it the least. You can have nothing and you can still have your own back. You can have tremendous problems and very real obstacles that you're facing. And you can have a mindset that says, through my efforts, my attitude, I can have an impact on the situation that I To wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. Plans can be debilitating. It's good to have a plan, but it's more important that you have a purpose. If you have a purpose, plans will evolve, things will happen, plans will fall apart, new things will come up. Whatever has to happen will happen. If you hold on to a certain purpose, other things will just serve that purpose. You've got to let go and let it happen because if you don't, you're going to be all clutched up. You're going to be constantly trying to do what can happen healthily only if you don't try. When we face challenges and have things that come against us, it's easy to start dreading it, thinking this is going to be so hard. How can I accomplish this dream? I don't have the resources, the connections. And yes, there are seasons where we have to endure, do the right thing when it's hard. In the depths of despair, an idea is going to come to you. It's like, good God, who put this mess together? And is it really worth it? Is it really worth the suffering? And so the question is, well, are there ways that you can act that make things really much better? And I think that's the question is, can we have our cake and eat it too? Can we have the being that requires limitation and suffering and also simultaneously transcend that by our mode of being? You don't achieve worthwhile goals quickly or easily. They take time. They take struggle. They take relentless pursuit day in and day out. That's what it takes. And I also believe that we're going to end up one day meeting a maker if you believe in one. And I believe that maker knows everything about you. Everything about you. But you also have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. You have choices. And the one thing that scares me to death in my life is getting to heaven and not being where I'm supposed to be. And I believe that God has a chart, and he looks at the chart, and he puts it in front of you when you get to heaven. He says, hey, this is what you're supposed to be. And one of my biggest fears in life was to see that chart and not have every block checked off. Dreams without goals are just dreams, and they ultimately fuel disappointment. Goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. 
is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? Because once you find that, it puts you in your power place. See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. And if you don't know what it is that you showed up to do, if you don't know why you're here, I encourage you to find out what your purpose is here. What is the meaning of your life? Everything may not be perfect. There are things that need to change. Don't get so focused on what you want that you miss the beauty of this day. I want you to live the life you were meant to live. You hear me? Some of you are not transitioning because you're okay with the life you have. And I'm telling you, I, I, when I walk out, I want to be an example of you can start from wherever and get to wherever you want to get to. That's what I'm asking you to do. What fuels you? The reason why you're so lazy is not because you don't have the ability. You're so lazy because your dream's so small. And because you've got this short time on earth and there's lots of things that are very, very difficult to contend with. And, and you have the problem of tolerating yourself even in all your insufficiency. And one of the things that seems to me to be the case is that if you adopt a sufficiently profound mode of being, if you attempt to do that, then the mere act of lifting up that weight is enough to justify the fact that you're insufficient and mortal and, 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 and bound by tragedy. And I say to you that if you begin to take a conscious effort to find out what it is that you're supposed to do, I say that it can literally save your life. I said that it can literally save your life. We thought everything in life, but we do nothing about it. Very few people do anything about it. What the f are you doing about it? You gotta take action in your life. You gotta stop and you gotta start being, find a solution to your problem. Don't be the problem. Take action. For every action, there's an opposite reaction. If all you do is Nothing's going to happen in your life. Take action, take control. Before you can be a painter who can paint what's beyond mere memory, you, you have to inculcate that discipline, skill, and a lot of that is painful repetition and hard grinding work. It's the sacrifice of the present for the future. But once you manage that, then things open up, and, and virtually everything you learn of value is like that. I need you to focus on why you were born in the first place. Why are you here on earth for this particular time? What are you doing here? Your DNA is in your dream. And most of y'all chasing stuff, you don't realize your dreams are so important because your DNA, who you are as a person, is wrapped up in your dreams. And what this world has done to you is take that from you because they know if you know who, your dream, who you are and you get your dreams, you're probably not gonna work for most of them. So I say that your life is worth finding what it is that you're supposed to do. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Movies are supposed to provoke emotion. They're supposed to make you feel something. But I have a better idea. Go out into the world and actually feel it. Go feel joy and love and triumph and rapture and ecstasy and glory. Go feel those things.
The self is everything you could be across time. So you imagine that there's you and there's the potential inside you, whatever that is, you know? And potential is an interesting idea because it represents something that isn't yet real, yet we act like it's real. Because people will say to you, you should live up to your potential. We really can't control anything other than our own thoughts, our own behavior, our own patterns. We can't control what other people do, say, or think. And it's this illusion of control, oftentimes, that we can somehow manipulate other people or manipulate situations that cause us to fall into these patterns. But what we do have the power of in life is we have the power to choose. We often fear that in order to achieve something new, to become someone new, we have to abandon everything that we are. But in fact, that's not how it works. Change can happen plank by plank, board by board, habit by habit. And gradually, you can become someone new. With consistency and repetition, you can actually change not only your results, but actually your identity. And the reason that this is true is because the more evidence that we have for a belief, the more likely we are to believe it. Mindset is one of the most important feeders into your perspective, and perspective is everything. And the first most important decision that we all have to make, and this is one of my favorite Einstein quotes, is each and every one of us has to decide whether we live in a friendly or a hostile universe. That potential is partly what you could be if you interacted with the world in a manner that would gain you the most information. And so you walk through, you go to all the quarters of the world to find yourself. The actions that you take provide evidence for who you are. And it's not that habits matter more necessarily on an individual basis. Each moment in life matters. But what ends up happening is that over the broad span of time, things that you do once or twice fade away. And things that you do time after time, day after day, week after week, accumulate the bulk of the evidence for what you believe in. because to me, the very meaning of life is to see how many skills you can acquire that have utility and then put those skills to use in the service of something bigger than yourself. But the only way that you're going to be able to do that is to build into the core of your being the ability to endure. Life is hard. Life is going to kick you in the face. There are going to be a thousand times in your life when you're going to want to give up. And the only thing that is going to see you through, the only thing that's going to make sure that you actually f***ing endure is your mindset. All great thinkers have one thing in common. They spent long periods of time away from diversions, distractions, trivial interruptions. The things that we love that are not the most important are the easiest to rationalize spending time on and distracting us from the things that are really important, right? The things that are good but not great, that's the stuff that ends up taking us off course. It's not that we don't really want something, it's not that we don't really you know, want to improve or we don't know exactly what the most important thing is to us, it's that we choose to spend our ways on number six through our time on number six through 25 too often. But that's the stuff that pulls away from greatness. Things like, and one of the things you do when you're overwhelmed by crisis is you shorten your time frame. You know, it's like you can't think about next month. Maybe you can't even bloody well think about next week, or maybe not even tomorrow. You know, because now is just so overwhelming that that's all there is. It's like, and that's what you do. You cut your time frame back until you can cope with it. And if it's not the next week that you see how to get through, then it's the next day. And if it's not the next day, then it's the next hour. And if it's not the next hour, then it's the next minute. And you know, people are very, 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 very tough. It turns out that if you face things that you can put up with a lot more than you think you can put up with, and you can do it without becoming corrupted. Whatever it is, good, bad, or indifferent in your life, your current level of happiness, of joy, of success, of fulfillment is exactly what you think you deserve. It's exactly what you think you're worth. It's a hard thing to accept, but in our lives, we are getting out of our life right now exactly what we believe we're worthy of, exactly what we think we deserve. 
Our life is a direct reflection of our identity, which is the thoughts, concepts, beliefs, values, and worth we hold true to be about ourselves. Turns out most people spend 70% of their life living in survival and living in stress, so they're, they're always anticipating the worst case scenario based on a past experience, and they're literally, out of the infinite potentials in the quantum field, they're selecting the worst possible outcome, and they're beginning to emotionally embrace it with fear, and they're conditioning their body into a state of fear. What I want you guys to understand is one very simple thing. It is a decision. It's like the first thing you want to do is dispense with the idea that you get to have any, any permanent security outside of your ability to contend and adapt. It's like you're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. You have to be really careful whether you decide that life is difficult, it's this slew of things that's coming at you that's trying to break you and nothing ever good happens to you, or if you choose to believe, no matter what happens to you, you can always choose your response. You can always choose to believe that it's happening for you and not to you. And in that perspective, in having that mindset, then you're going to begin to look for the solutions. You're going to look for the ways out. You're going to look for the lesson that you can learn in the hardship. That is mindset. I want to find more, all I can. You have to dive in that to find more. Because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself, you're not gonna find anything. You can live right here on surface, man, right here on surface. There's nothing quite so tragic as a young cynic because it means the person has gone from knowing nothing to believing nothing. In my case, I was saved in that muteness. In the sort of that, I was saved. And I was able to draw from human thought, human disappointments and triumphs, enough to triumph myself probability that as you move forward on your adventure that you're going to get it right the first time is zero. It's just not going to happen. And so then you might think, well, maybe I'll just wait around until I get the right idea, and which people do, right? So they're like 40-year-old, 13-year-olds, which is not a good idea. And so they wait around until they finally got it right. Waiting around isn't going to help because even if it, the perfect opportunity manifested itself to you in your incomplete form, the probability that you would recognize it as the perfect opportunity is zero. I think the biggest vulnerability you've got is you actually value somebody's opinion more than you value your own. To me, the way you win is you realize you can't hear nobody. At the end of the day, my guy, yourself. You gotta get real, real quiet up here. I can't hear anything. The goal isn't to be the best every day. The goal isn't to, out, to outdo your competition every day. That's a finite construction. Finite players play to, be be to beat the people around them. Infinite players play to be better than themselves. Fulfillment is what matters. It is a neurochemistry state. 
The game that you're playing is not success, it is not money, it is not legacy, it is neurochemistry. It's feeling good about yourself right now today, in this moment. Now, the absolute foundational building block to fulfillment is progress. Now, it, I don't mean progress in worldly pursuits. I mean humans are an active species that are absolutely designed to learn, adapt, and grow. Now, what it doesn't incentivize is the obsession over where other people are, whether or not we have unique ideas, whether or not we're valuable. None of that is gonna bring you joy, okay? As they say, comparison is the thief of joy. If you become successful, don't just stand at the top of the mountain, don't just stand at the top of the building, go back down the stairs and, and keep building and keep living as that person that got you there because you only got there because you started from the bottom. Right, no one starts at the top, mm. and so you started at the bottom and you built it up. And it was that mindset that you started with that got you there. And so for me, one of the best ways of dealing with success is keep expanding the goalposts. In your mind, when you push real hard, you have this door in your mind. And a lot of us don't want to open that door. Once you open that door, you're in a tunnel. It's a dark ass tunnel. And you can't stay. There's one thing about being in dark places. If you have the courage to stay in there long enough, your eyes will start to adjust to the darkness. You are your competition. And that is what ensures you stay in the game the longest. And that is what ensures you find joy. Because the joy comes not from comparison, but from advancement. Change is also the principle of life. That means everything that is alive will change. To everything, there's a season. How many things have a season? Everything. This is one of the best news I ever got in my life. Let me tell you why. If you're having a bad time right now, it cannot last. There's a place in you that you must keep inviolate. You must keep it pristine, clean, so that nobody has the right to curse you or treat you badly. Nobody, no mother, father, no wife, no husband, no, nobody. Because that may be the place you go to when you meet God. But we won't believe it. In this entire universe, most people like only three or four things. When you're so constipated in your head, that you lack only three or four people or three or four things in your life, how do you want to open up to the existence? Because life is happening because of its openness. Breath is happening, so much is happening in connection with everything. It is only in openness you're alive. As you close doors, you are dying in installment. Don't exist secret here. The secrets don't exist. Exist hard work, dedication. Be obsessed to be something, something in the life, mm. 
and follow their dreams. I think whatever you want to be, dedicate yourself, you know, work hard, you know, and believe in you. I think this is the main words, not just a kid who want to be a Cristiano Ronaldo, but anything it can be, you know, work hard. It's, I think it's, it's the main work and the dream uh, to believe in that everything is possible in a life. All this happened because of the reason. The reason is I'm unbelievable inside the pit. In my mind, I'm always the best. When I take that decision, I will be a professional player. I will be something in the football. This is how I feel because I, I was feeling from the beginning that I was different than the other ones. I was more special, I was a special kid. You have to put in your mind ethic of work when you are professional. So since day one, uh, when I start with a professional, let's say with 16, 17, 18, I'm always have ethic to be the best, to train hard, to listen to all the players, experienced players. And um, of course my dream is coming true. Well, it's dedication and hard work. Uh, this is my, my words, to dedicate myself 100% every time to be the position that I am today. It's not one year, it's 10 years, 12 years, you know, to maintain my level. For me, the most important is to maintain my level in the pitch, you know, to play good, to score goals, to do assistants, to win trophies. This is what I want to keep continuing to do it because it's what I love to do it is to play football. You have to dedicate yourself 100%. My subconscious, I'm always speak with the ball. I'm always say, do it the right trajectory, go to the net. Of course, I know. If you have positive thoughts, this is help that things going better. This is why I always do it. My sub, I don't thinking about that, but my, my subconscious, they thinking. This is why I think that the, the, the things happen in my life is not by coincidence. It's because, you know, my mind, it's connect with the ball, with my, with my life, my friends, family. I'm always have that, that positive mind. The best players always follow the best players. They want to be uh, in the top of the, the game because the other ones, they are there. You know, you cannot rest or sleep because the other one can pass you. Of course, we fight with everyone with uh, Neymar, with uh, Messi, with Lewandowski. And Ronaldo is there again! Would you believe it? To be the best. This is why it's my, my main point, it's my motivation, it's to be better than them, than them, year after year. I think the numbers, they say everything. I don't need to say, oh, I'm a minister of football, I'm a legend. The numbers say everything, so this is I'm very comfortable. And he said to me, Cristiano, the most important thing, I knew it, and everyone know that. And he said, Cristiano, we have money, we have everything, we have fame. I have millions, billions, but the most important thing is the family. Keep your family healthy, good, and take care of your family because this is the most important thing in the world. Apart of that, of course, you have your life, your private life, your cars, your houses, your fame. But in the beginning, your family, it's always with you for the good moments and for the bad moments. Since when I was, when I was young, I always learned if you give, the God gonna give you the double. So this is what's happened in my life. Since I start to do that, everything in my life become better and better. So I will still carry on to do that because I think it's, it's important and I feel good when I do that.
when I left my family with 11 uh, years old to live in a different world, which is Lisbon. Uh, I was cry uh, almost every day to miss my family, but I'm not, I'm not regret. Without sacrifice, we cannot uh, win nothing. So I did an uh, unbelievable sacrifice, my family too. I think I have, I did a good option. I don't care what the people are thinking, what they say. In my mind, not just this year, but always, I'm always the best. I'm always going to say that because you, I think we have, to thinking we are the best in our area. So in my area, I think I'm the best. How do you overcome the suffering of, the, of life? How do you overcome the suffering of life? Just be a better person. That's how you do it. Well, that's hard. It takes responsibility. And I think, you know, if you said to someone, you want to have a meaningful life, everything you do matters. That's the definition of a meaningful life. But everything you do matters. So you're going to have to carry that with you. Once you understand, the whole reason to acquire a skill is that it gives you power. Now I'm gonna define power. Power to me is the ability to close your eyes and imagine a world, the world the way you wish it was, and then open your eyes and make that world come true. That's power. And the thing that stands between you, where you are today, and your goals, where you want to get, is a gap in skill set. It is a gap in abilities. One thing I've realized is we, we become victims when we recite our excuses and we recite them so many times, we actually believe they are true. And I think you can cling to your excuses or you can go out there and have an impact and live a fulfilling life and be highly creative and, and enjoy the magic life, but you, you don't get to do both. It's like your growth is the only limit to your happiness. If you're not happy, you're not growing in some area. And usually it's a place where you're blaming 
You're pointing the finger. I don't care if it's government. Don't get me wrong. People can be unfair, unjust. That's for sure happens. But you can't control that. You can't make it not happen. What you have to do is become stronger than any of it so you're free. Freedom comes from growth. Freedom does not come from control. Because control is an illusion. You can't control everybody, no matter how hard you try. You can't control what you think or feel. And not everybody's going to be fair and just. And you, my dear friends, and I, have not always been fair and just. Whether we admit it or not, it's just the nature of being a being, a human being. But we can make the largest pattern fair and just, and loving and powerful and serving and growing, until it becomes the dominant thing inside you. And then you experience life as being great, not you're great. Life's great because you're living a great path. Here's your new definition of passion. Passion is simply energy. That's all that it is, okay? Passion is what you feel when you are energized and excited about what you're doing, okay? I'm gonna tell you what your purpose on Earth is right now. Your purpose on Earth is to figure out how to align your life so that you feel more energized and excited by it. That's it. And it begins with you following the energy and following your natural enthusiasm. You're not gonna think your way to passion. You can't think your way to finding something that you feel in your heart. It doesn't work that way. You gotta feel your way into it. It's inside of you, do you understand? There's no passion out there somewhere. The passion is in here. Every decision we make in our lives as individuals or as organizations is a piece of communication. It's our way of saying something about who we are and what we believe. This is why authenticity matters. This is why you have to say and do the things you actually believe because the things you say and do are symbols of who you are. And we look for those symbols so we can find people who believe what we believe. Our very survival depends on it. So if you're putting out false symbols, you will attract people to those symbols, but you won't be able to form trust with them. The goal of putting something out there, if you say what you believe and you do what you believe, you will attract people who believe what you believe. Or do you want to just forget about the whole meaning thing and then you don't have any responsibility because who the hell cares? And you can wander through life doing whatever you want, gratifying impulsive desires for how useful that's going to be. And you're stuck in meaninglessness, but you don't have any responsibility. Which one do you want? Well, ask yourself, which one are you pursuing? And you'll find very rapidly that it isn't the majority of your soul that's pursuing the whole meaning thing, because, well, look what you have to do to do that yet. Yeah have to take on the fact that life is suffering. You have to put yourself together in the face of that. Whatever that is, wherever you want to go, plant that flag, identify the skills that you would need to get there, and then set about every day getting those skills. Well, ask yourself, which one are you pursuing? And you'll find very rapidly that it isn't the majority of your soul that's pursuing the whole meaning thing. Because, well, look what you have to do to do that. You have to take on the fact that life is suffering. You have to put yourself together. It's old. It's the oldest story of mankind. Get yourself together. Transcend your suffering. See if you can be some kind of hero. Make the suffering in the world less. Well, that's the way forward, as far as I can tell, if there is any way forward.
people's lives aren't what they would like them to be. And so then you ask, why? Well, forget about tragedy and catastrophe, because that's self-evident. But one of the main reasons that people don't get what they want is because they don't actually figure out what it is. And the probability that you're going to get what would be good for you, let's say, which would even be better than what you want, right? Because you, know, you might be what, wrong about what you want, easily. But maybe you could get what would really be good for you. Well, why don't you? Well, because you don't try. The thing that makes individuals really, really special who are that great is they're always looking for that competitive edge. So it's interesting to see how a champion in sports, it's the same mindset. It's about winning the battles, continuing to improve, learning new ways to stay ahead, uh, stay ahead of the game. Clarity is what gives you the idea of success. When you can see, and you can think, and you can react with a clear mind. He said, if you worry about whether other people think about you, you will always be their prisoner. So, unless you're prepared to be other people's prisoners, at some point, if they're hurling dirt on you, if they're constantly trying to rebury you under the earth that you're trying to claw your way out from, then you're never gonna get out. You've got to just stop worrying about what they think. So they can't actually affect you. They can only try to influence your mindset. You don't think, okay, here's what I would like if I could have it. I don't mean in a way that you manipulate the world to force it to deliver you goods for status or something like that. That isn't what I mean. I mean something like, imagine that you were taking care of yourself like you were someone you actually cared for. And then you thought, okay, I, I'm caring for this person. I would like things to go as well for them as possible. What would their life have to be like in order for that to be the case? No one will believe in you until you believe in you. And so good people often become seduced by the chatter of their loudest fears. Do not let them. You've got to understand who you're trying to become, believe in your ability to get there, to become that person, to understand that to continue to beat yourself up for something in the past is not going to serve you. And so for that very reason, let it go. We, we are good in our comfort zones, but the moment we start to go blue ocean around our next level of mastery, our fears come up. The mind is an instrument, don't let it play you. So it's, it's a really powerful thing to remember, to be, just, just remember that, you know? That, that is, that's the job of the mind, is to hold on to things and to, to kind of attach to things. And it's your job to say, I choose this thought and I don't choose that. And I, you know, because whatever you give energy to is what grows. You know, where your energy goes is what grows. And it's like, we have to choose where we put our energy in because that's where we're going to manifest. So it's, it's the, the more consciously and we can make those choices and where we're letting our mind go, the better it's gonna be for us. Because we're going out into the unknown, it's human. You know, if you were look, to look at the psychobiology of it, and you were to study the pure biology of it, there's a term called homeostasis. Human beings are hardwired for a steady state. What happens is when we come up with a new idea and when we see a new opportunity, and we start to leave our comfort zones into the zone of the unknown where greatness lives, we get scared. And so I think it starts with realizing your life is not random. You are not here by accident. When you arrive on whatever scene it is, heaven touches earth. Your goodness, your light, your creativity is heaven touching earth. And that perspective changes the way we show up in the world. No nostalgia for catastrophe. I think that's what that means, is that when you 
leave what's not good, you wash the dust off your feet, and you don't look back. And that's a very harsh lesson. It's that there's no excuses whatsoever for not getting up and getting at it. That's what it means. It even means that when people are beset with a catastrophe, like that they are prone to use that as an excuse for not going about the business that they should be going about. Because they can say to themselves, well, I would accept. And accept, there's always good reasons. I mean, believe me, there's always good reasons for not doing what you should. That's for sure. The reasons pile up day after day to not do what you should. Especially because you're, you're aiming at things in the future. You can put them off indefinitely, right? Because of the demands of the day. When you leave somewhere terrible, do not look back. There's no nostalgia. That's, that's the letting the dead parts of yourself go. To experience drastic positive change. And here's the thing about running away from your problems, running away from your past. Have you ever noticed that when you run away, it tends to follow you? And then if you're going to follow the good, there's no excuse not to do it, and, that does, and it means no excuse whatsoever, under any circumstances. Like there's no excuse whatsoever for not getting at what it is that you should be doing.